All right, Oval fans. I was asleep. <laughs> no, for real. I, I, I might do a separate video, but I've just been going through a lot of stressful things in pertaining to the house situation. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll do a live or something. I usually don't get super personal in here, but you are the family, if you will. So I just wanted to let you know where I was at. But long story short, uh, yesterday, the 30th mark, three months. Well, excuse me. Yesterday, the 30th mark, three months remaining on the current lease. So three months from yesterday, it's the final day here. You know, like I said, most of the apartments packed. I think I mentioned this in that other video, but the closet's pretty much done. Like I'm just sitting here waiting for, you know, go time. But essentially... I passed out from like 6.30 to about 2 a.m. I was that exhausted and stressed out. But I did watch the episode this morning. I just finished up about 30 minutes ago. I got my notes here. I did the notes about the trailer. I made a mini list of videos to come off of the episode. Um, Hidden Secrets. Let's just go into the synopsis. Season 2, Episode 7, Hidden Secrets. Hunter and Victoria team up to deal with their son's behavior. Barry and Sharon's relationship continues to crumble. Donald and Lily's love triangle takes a turn. This episode, despite me having... Let me double check here. Yeah, I have about two pages of notes. It felt like nothing really happened. I know this sounds weird. Um, sorry for the page flipping, but I'm literally just uh, going through the notes right now and... Despite having a lot of notes, it just felt like not too much happened. Like I said, I mean, maybe you felt differently than I did. And like I said, I was wide awake when I watched the episode. So this wasn't me feeling groggy or hungry and, you know, irritable. No, I sat down. I watched the episode, but it just felt like uh, more rehashing of the same. So... I'll give the episode maybe like a maybe like a a six out of ten. Maybe I'll change it by the time I get to the end of this review. But I just wasn't really feeling the episode. There were some good parts. Don't get me wrong, but there were some parts that made me go, "Okay, this is getting a bit annoying." But let's dive into it. So you know the drill by now. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Hit the bell notification icon and select all. That way you don't miss out whenever I post content to the channel. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description box below. And please hit subscribe. Um, you know, some people have been saying they've been unsubscribed for some reason. And if you are a frequent viewer of the channel, hit the button. That way you can help increase the percentage of subscriber watch time on the channel. So, yeah, this episode really had a ton of repetitive dialogue. It's kind of funny because the beginning and end of the episode pertain to Kyle. You know, like he's going back and forth with Alan. And then at the end of the episode, I think we were at like the 39 or 40 minute mark. And as soon as Kyle walked into that office with Lily, I knew they were just going to have the same repetitive dialogue back and forth. And that's what they did here. So. Alan caught Donald and Kyle kissing. He was like, um, sir, I just want to let you know the president wants to see you immediately. And then, you know, Kyle goes in the office with Alan and Donald's like, play nice. And essentially, he's asking Alan what he saw. No, I didn't see anything. Are you uncomfortable, Alan? Yeah, it's a little hot in here. Uh, what kind of hot do you mean? It's like, you know, hot so I could, you know, we need to turn the air up. And he just interrogates him. Hey, where's your, where are you from? Who do you talk to? Well, I just want to make clear that, you know, if I hear anything about what you quote unquote didn't see, then I'll have your eyeballs. I'll take them out, put them in the jar. So Alan's like, I won't tell anybody because I know my place here. And then Kyle leaves and I'm like, kill this creepy motherfucker. So we go to the next scene where, and here's, I was about to give the episode a zero right here. Cause I got pissed off. So Priscilla calls Jean's boyfriend and it wasn't me. Yeah, I wasn't the one who was on screen. I wasn't the one that received the phone call. I felt kind of offended. But no, um, the boyfriend's name is Greg and I. it looks like he's a construction worker. And she's calling Jean. Well, she's calling because she's worried about Jean. And Greg's like, yeah, I've been calling her, you know, all last night, this morning. I haven't heard anything back. And Priscilla's like, yeah, I'll go over there later. It's like, no, no, don't worry. I'll take off work right now. Go over to Gene's place to see what's going on. So this 
That part was the first thing that pissed me off that Jean's boyfriend isn't me. Ah! But then we move to the next scene. Well, same scene. And, and this is where, okay. So Sam walks into, I guess it's like the little break room for um, the White House employees. He walks in, tells Priscilla about the job offer because, look, I'm sorry about what's going on, but the first lady wants me to be the head of her new, uh, her security staff. And we need the money. Turns out we learned a little bit more about Sam and Priscilla's situation here. So basically, they're in a bit of debt considering that I believe Priscilla's mother, well, they had to take a second mortgage on Priscilla's mother's house as well as her having cancer. I don't know if the mother, I, I may have misinterpreted this conversation, but was Priscilla's mother, is, did she pass already? Because I do know that she has cancer and it took a second mortgage on the house. So basically that puts Sam and Priscilla in a bit of a financial bind, which goes back to how I'm like, what the hell? Priscilla flat out wrote a check from Sam's bank account for $25,000. Holy shit. Okay, so basically, he's like, look, if I take this job, it'll be less work, but it's going to be more money. And then Priscilla, and look, don't get me wrong. I vouch for both sides, actually. I said that I can see both parties of the marriage being upset well, or excuse me, not upset, but I can see why Priscilla would be upset. I can see why Sam was in a vulnerable position because of the freaking first lady and the fact he was a horny dog because of his wife not giving it up. So after Sam breaks it down the best way he could, this woman, she goes into, oh, OK, I see what this is about. What is it because we don't have kids? Is it because I'm not having given you sex like you want? Because my mother's debt? Oh, I get it. This is about your brother, Will. Okay, because your brother, Will, he's not in debt. He has a lot of kids. And I see it in your eyes every time, you know, we are around them. So, you know what? Take that job. Do what you got to do, Sam. Because this, if you do it, there is no... And it's like, this is not the best thing for me. This is the best thing for us. I'll just let you know right now. If what well, I, I think she's like, if you take this job or whatever, there is no us. And then Sam's like, look, we... Priscilla, don't say that, baby, because he basically comes in there like, look, we're in a situation where we need this job right now. It's like, I didn't write you up for anything. No, we both need to stay in our game, do this job to get our money because we need it. So here's where Priscilla lost me. And some I remember in the Facebook group and in the comment section of some of my old videos, some people are calling her out. She's like, I'm dealing with a lot right now. Richard apparently trying to uh, flirt and go out with Frida. That creepy ass boy upstairs, Jason. I know he has something to do with Gene. I ain't got time for your mess. I'm so disappointed in you. I could stop the episode review right here and just talk about how much was wrong with this scene. Very well acted. Kudos to the actors, uh, Walter and um, I forgot her name, but it begins with a T. They were both great in this scene. But this is a prime example of why Priscilla, she's a great friend a big sister to Jean. Obviously, you know, she's like a big sister. You know, a good spirited person around the oval for other workers. She she basically has everybody's best interest in heart. But the problem is you're spending so much time worrying about this person, that person, you know, th what they're doing, but you're neglecting what's going on in your own home. Uh, and look, I'm not saying that a wife's duty is to get down every time a, uh, the husband says get down on your knees. Well, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying that if she spent as much time paying attention to the needs of her husband, not necessarily sexual, but just quality time and possibly sex, too. But then he may not have been in that situation with Victoria. I'm not blaming Priscilla, but I'm just saying that I feel like there were more than two characters or two parties involved in what happened with Victoria. Because of the fact that Priscilla is definitely not giving her husband the attention he deserves because of the fact that she's so busy worrying about Nancy and Richard's marriage or worried about Jean and things like that. I'm not saying that, you know, those situations don't warrant concern. But at the same time, when it comes to Jean, I can definitely understand 
why um, she would be worried about her little sis, so to speak. But with the Nancy and Richard thing, it's like, um, come on now, that's really not your business. I mean, they are your friends, but I think you should concern yourself about what's going on under your own roof. So I just think this makes Priscilla to be worse of a person because I'm still tripping on the fact that, yeah, y'all are in debt took out a second mortgage on your sick mother's home, but yet you're going to give $25,000 out of spite to Nancy for Picky's funeral. Oh boy. But again, this was a very good scene. I'm just, it just made me pissed off at Priscilla. Okay. So then we go over to Max and Bobby. This is a brief scene and, uh, you know, they're at the cabin and, you know, he's making coffee. Bobby's just, you know, on edge about not getting a call back from Lily, but, um, He's about to go check on her and Max is like, fine, I'll go with you. So Diane calls and it turns out, you know, she's going back to the White House. They're playing a dangerous game and uh, she'll check in twice a day. Max is concerned. It's like, I don't know. It's like she's a bit too eager. And then he tells Bobby the same thing. It's like, hey, you need to watch out, too, because of the fact that you might be uh, treading on thin ice because of your emotions. So then we go over to Greg showing up at Jean's. Uh, nobody's at the home but the place has been torn apart, probably Kyle's doing. So after that, um, he calls Priscilla to let her know what's going on. Apparently it's like he apparently he's been locked up before, and Priscilla says, Hey, call the police, but you know, you, have you touched anything? No, I just opened the door. Okay, get out of there as soon as you can, and then just call the cops. So then we go over to um Dean and Sharon. Apparently, Sharon's impressed that uh Dean is catching on pretty quickly when it comes to restocking the store. And, you know, they talk just a little bit more about the Rakadushi. I mean, he doesn't know much because most of everything pertained to the Rakadushi was rumors. And he doesn't really get into the small town gossip, but he just knows they used to come to the store frequently on, well, consistently on the same days. They would shop, buy the same stuff they always buy, but also try to recruit young girls. And then Barry shows up because uh, Kareem's like, hey, there's a guy out there. It looks like he's trying to get your attention. And he asked about the pregnancy because he gives her a few chances. Is there anything you want to tell me? Is there anything you want to tell me? And then she slaps him um, <clears throat> when he's like, wait, is it mine? Who else could it be, Barry? It's like, well, I saw you with him. And this, I know Barry's like, as soon as his mom shows up, like, y'all trying to make me look like I'm crazy. I'm like, Barry, just the way you step to uh, Sharon and how you're talking right now, a lot of people would assume you're crazy. But um, basically, Nancy shows up after Kareem goes outside and, you know, Nancy's thankfully there because he told Sharon, it's like, oh, I'll drive through the front of the store again. I'm like, oh, my God. So Nancy shows up, gets his ass to calm down. Well, not calm down, but essentially just leave. And then, um, you know, Kareem goes back in the store. Barry leaves and it's just her and Sharon. It's like, Miss Nancy, he's crazy. It's like, it's so ridiculous. It's like, I know, baby, I know. And it's like, I'll go back to work. It's like, but I'll pray for you. You need to pray for him. This is some bullshit. I know some people in the group were saying they didn't like Nancy. I think I vouched for her last week for like the first time in forever. If the first time, you know, in general, I don't think Nancy was the bad person in this situation. I mean, like I said before, she was just throwing away the trash, noticed a pregnancy test. And yeah, that was a big deal. So I, I, I'm not faulting her at all. I still think she's a crappy person for not telling Rich who the father is, but I don't think that, uh, no, I don't blame Nancy for this situation. I don't, because this is a big deal. She just so happened to innocently find a pregnancy test and just, oh, Sharon's the only person in this house, so she must be pregnant with Barry's kid. And that's simply it. That's all I got to say about it. So Donald introduces, I believe it's Dr. Meadows. Feel free to correct me, but I believe it's Dr. Meadows. One of the best in the field goes to meet Hunter, and you know he's perverted, but she's the best at what she does, and she goes to meet Jason. And uh, here's something I want to give a point to the episode for. Uh, we didn't do an extreme close-up, but didn't it look like Hunter was actually reading briefings? Like he was actually doing his freaking job? Points. I mean, because I was like, Lord, is he looking at like a porn magazine? Or no, the dude was actually reading brief briefings. And as I know it's weird to say because this is like episode 32 overall for the series, but this is like the first time we've actually seen Hunter do some presidential shit. Yeah, I know that's a big deal in itself. Okay, so basically we go over to Kareem and I, yeah, again, the same old crap. Why are you with him? You should be with me. I love that baby like it was my own. The only thing that made this scene worth watching was when Kareem and Sharon were going back and forth. You could see Dean slowly creeping in, in the back. 
he was like, uh oh, because you know it looked like he was going back to the shelter restock. So you just saw him slowly walking in the background and he was looking at his head like, okay. So then as soon as um Kareem is done, he walks back and looks at Dale's like, Yeah, well you heard all that, huh? Yeah, yeah, you're a part of this store too now. I was like, Oh my god, which I found hilarious because I guess it's awkward for him to overhear that, but remember he told Sharon that he was attracted to Kareem, but I feel like he knows, that, oh yeah, he must not be gay. Never mind. So we go over to Donald and the doctor and Victoria. Basically, some brief introductions. Victoria actually knows who she is from her work. And he's like, wait, you're going to go in there alone? Because Victoria's like, okay, let me just introduce you. He's like, no, I like to go in there and, you know, pretty much case my patients out solo. Okay. So she goes in introduced herself, asked she could sit on the bed. Jason's at his desk, just, you know, doodling in his uh, notebook or whatever he was doing. And basically, um, he asks, like, wait, what are you doing? Is like, did they pay you? Did they not pay you? What are they doing? He basically pulls a gale by saying, you know, her his parents are terrible. And he's like, nobody ever listens to me. Well, I want to listen. And it's like, well, I have a few questions for you then. Then we switch back to Victoria and Donald and, you know, he asked about the whole drama thing. If you like this, it's like, no, here's I want Sam to be the head of uh, security detail for me. Wait, Sam, because it seems like, you know, Donald feels like there's somebody probably more qualified for that position. That's not to say the head of Secret Service Sam wouldn't be, but he probably feels like there's somebody better suited for the job. But then Victoria makes it clear like, oh, oh, you want Sam. OK, OK. And then, you know, they have a brief exchange about him being gay, but he's not gay. And it's like, well, what if I was? It wouldn't be a bad thing. Would it? So he goes off to, you know, see Sam. And we go back into the room. And I cannot believe. I know some people were telling me about this scene. But I'm like, nah, I know you're probably exaggerating. But this dude has a pillow on his uh, waist. I mean, his uh, lap. And he's jacking off and it's like, does this bother you? It's like, um, well, if you're going to keep doing that, I'm just going to step outside. And it's just like, no, don't leave me. Don't leave me. And this fool just tosses his inner fluids on her and she gets up to leave. And this fool is laughing, turns around and I'm thinking, well, is the motherfucker going to wash his hands? No, this fool opens his notebook and it looks like he wipes his hand on the paper and gets back to work. I'm like, Tyler, oh my God. Thank God this wasn't BET Plus. Anyway, so she leaves the room. It's like, oh, is there a restroom around here? Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's right around the corner. I think the funniest thing about this scene, this wasn't funny at all, but the funny thing about the scene was Victoria the entire time because she's like, she's been in there for a long time. It's like, he's a piece of work. I'm surprised she hasn't come out, you know, driven bat shit crazy by that boy. So, yeah. All right, so we go over to Bobby and Max. This is a brief scene. I don't know if uh, the episode was edited weird, but it seemed like we were only in Bobby and Max's vehicle for like 20 seconds. They're heading over to Donald's house and, you know, he's just freaked out. So then we go over to Ellie and Hunter. You know, Hunter comes in and apologizes to how he spoke to her. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm stressed. I'm going through a lot. He's like, yeah, but that doesn't give you the right to talk to me like that. And he tries to bargain with her. He's like, oh, yeah, don't worry. It's like he reassures her that she's still a vital part of the White House. But at the same time, it's like, wait, can you see me later? It's like, I'll think about it. So we go over to... Kyle coming upstairs to talk with Donald. Donald's waiting for the doctor to come out of the restroom. Kyle's just talking about how suspicious he is about the situation with uh, Lily and how she can't be trusted. And the fact that I don't know something doesn't seem right. She's probably working with someone. I need to figure out, you know, what's going down. So he leaves. Well, Donald says leaves and the doctor comes out and says that, yeah, this boy is a piece of work and um, I'm going to leave for the day. But I think the best thing that we need to do is have family therapy for the all the families like he's angry he says his parents are awful his sister was taken away he doesn't even know where she is um if we don't do group therapy i need to at least sit down with um the president and first lady so donald you know goes to arrange that and jason's creeping the whole time all right then we go over to the last two scenes here uh i'll save the sam and richard thing in a moment let me go for kyle and lily so Lily's in Donald's office going through files. She's taking pictures of everything and 
Then Kyle comes in and they have a just a back and forth. What are you doing here? Get out of my house, Kyle. What are you doing here? Looking through his things. This is his house. This is my house, Kyle. Get out of here, girlfriend. He's like, fine, I'll call security. So she calls security on the phone. It doesn't work. She used her cell phone. It doesn't work. Well, you're dealing with the government, girlfriend. So he must have had like an M EMP or something that took out all the phone connections in the house. But after looking, kind of glancing down at what she was looking at, Kyle was like, okay, fine. Well, I'll find out one way or another who you're working with. So he puts on some black gloves and that's the end of the episode. So then we go to the kitchen. Richard's just looking through that same book he was looking at at the kitchen back at his house, looking at calendar dates from his time in Iraq. And Sam walks in. He's like, yeah, I'm just looking at some calendar dates from our time serving in Iraq. And Sam's like, oh, I heard about you taking, what's that? You, you talking with Frida? Yeah, we're going to go to dinner. And, um, the basis of this scene is that Richard knows something's wrong between Sam and Priscilla, but Sam's like, no, there's nothing wrong. My wife is happy. Don't worry about that. And then on the flip side, Sam is like, what's going on between you and Nancy if you're messing with Frida? What's going on? Oh, nothing's going on. It's like she ain't the woman I thought she was. So then when he's like, okay, I'll see you later. Because Rich's like, okay, I got to go. It's like, okay, I'll see you later, brother. And it's like, he about to give him a fist bump. Richard just looks at him funny and leaves. So does this mean a possibility that Richard is suspicious that Sam is Picky's father? Because maybe the calendar dates aren't really adding up or the calendar dates possibly link to Sam instead of his brother? I don't know. So that was pretty much the end of the episode. And like I said, it wasn't a bad episode, but it just felt like we were just getting the same old, same old, just the same old back and forth conversations, the same old, you know, Priscilla being mad at Sam and, you know, Jason being a creep. I honestly didn't, I honestly can't believe Tyler did that with his character and the doctors. Like, oh yeah, I'm 38, I'm married, but he just throws semen, I don't know, whatever. But let me know, am I too hard on the episode? Do you think a 6 out of 10 was too low? Did you enjoy it? I don't know. I know not every episode can be a 10 out of 10 or anything like that, but I feel like this is one of the weaker episodes of the season so far. A decent semi-setup, you know, like with Diane going to the White House, the family therapy that's going to happen, um, furthering the pregnancy thing, but I'm just... I'm Tyler's done the pregnancy crap way too often. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I don't care. It's like the Kareem thing, just get rid of those characters. It's like the same old thing every single episode. I don't want to see you unhappy. I love you. It's like, I don't really care. I'm glad Sharon called him out on that, but it's this is like the eighth time she's done it. So I, I don't know. It's ridiculous. Okay, guys. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. And if you'd like to donate to the channel, feel free to do so on PayPal or Cash App. And with that being said, I'll talk to you in the next video.